Okay, so we're talking about graphs. Now, if I give you a graph and I put something like um, this, you're like, well, that is a huge decline. You're thinking like the world is ending. But then if you notice on the side that this is like 10% and this up here is 12%. Well, now the decline's not quite so big. It's only a two percentage difference, right? But because of the vertical graph, right? The vertical, what's the words I'm looking for? Um, the intervals, that's what can make or break a graphic, right? If I had drawn this graph <clears throat> where zero was down here, let's just say 15% was up here, and my difference was from 10 to 12, we're looking 10 to 12 right here. That change doesn't look nearly as drastic, right? as it does on the left graph because of the way the graph and the vertical change is different. So when you're looking at graphs, you have to pay attention to the axis and how they've labeled the axes because that can make a huge difference on the change. If I'm a reporter or a politician and I want to get a huge rise out of the community, I'm going to show this graph. Right. People don't if you're talking to them, people don't necessarily look at the vertical axis. They're just looking at the picture. Right. They're looking at this part and thinking, oh, my gosh, the world is ending. That's not happening. If I'm a scientist or somebody who actually cares about data, a mathematician, then I'm showing this graph because it shows what it's actually happening. Yes, we have a decline, but no, the world is not ending. It's not the end. It's, it's OK. So the big thing is, yeah, it should affect your reaction depending on the vertical axis because it gives you bias, right? It changes the way that the data looks simply by the slope of the line, whether it's very, very sharp or it's more diluted. So that's that's one way that we can look at, at biases. Um, okay, can I, let me erase that. Sticking on the idea of graphs, um, in vertical axis. This is what's really, really important. If I'm, and I don't know what that little black circle is. If I'm looking at a normal graph, a good graph without bias should start with zero and then go to whatever number we want it to be, right? That's going to give us the most accurate depiction of our graphic. However, a lot of people are like, you know what? I don't want my line to be real, real short or real, uh, I guess not sharp. So flat, I don't know. Um, so they might say, you know, we're going to start at 2,000 and go to 4,000, right? Very similar to the last graphicals that the graphics that we showed. Um, if they start at a huge number, it, it doesn't even have to be huge. It could be 10. Just anything other than zero, it's uh, giving a little bit of a distortion to your graphic, right? So again, we might have something a little more sharp instead of this flat line that we have if we're looking at a 4,000 to a 2000 decrease. Um, so if, if a graph starts at a bigger number other than zero, it should just make you question, why are they doing that? What is their motive in having the graph be distorted? That's kind of the big piece. All right, so that's dealing with graphs and making sure you're paying attention to the vertical axis.